Well, boys, another year almost over and time for Christmas once again. Yeah, and we all remember what happened last year. I hope you've got rid of that shotgun. Of course I did. Had to, didn't I? It had my fingerprints on it. Whatever happened to Santa's corpse, did we ever take it out of the shower fridge? Um, I'm not sure. Kids, if you don't understand that reference, then go back and listen to the 2013 Christmas special. Well, let's just hope nothing like that happens again this year. I just want a nice, normal Christmas where nothing out of the ordinary happens. Oh, come on! If you wanted that, then you wouldn't write these wacky sketches where things go crazy every year. It's bedtime now, so Santa's not coming, so what can possibly happen? Me and my big mouth. Larry! Curly! Mo! Thank God I found you! We're the 50-foot nerds, not the Three Stooges. And you're Doc Brown from Back to the Future. Oh, crap. I mean, oh, good! You're just who I was looking for! We weren't, were we? Well, no. Well, I'm here now, I suppose. So where is it, then? What? A Christmas present. It's Christmas Eve, after all. <gasps> Great Scott! You mean you time-travelled here and didn't even realise the date? Hey, I'm a mad scientist, not Amazon.com, OK? I don't have much room in the car for parcels. Well, what can you give us, then? Well, I guess I could always give us a trip in time in the DeLorean. I was going to say I'd get your subscription to Nerdblock.com, but OK! So, what do we fancy? Past or the future? I think it'd be interesting to see our ancestors and what they were interested in. Sounds good to me. I hope none of you get airsick. This baby can really fly. Wow. Everything looks so small from up here. That's what she said. I beg your pardon, you <laughs> cheeky little shit. <laughs> Why, ya yada? Why are you making jokes about his penis? <laughs> because it's small. Oh, you Christ stay me. out of this, old man! Hey, look, guys, 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 there's Joe. I think he's on his way to our place right now with a present. I hope the nerds like the Christmas chutney I've got for them. What the? A flying DeLorean? What the hell is going on? Okay, boys, your forebears are just in the next room, recording their radio program. They had a radio program? Heavens, yes! Why, just go in and hear it! I say, chaps, what say you of that ripping new cinemagraph playing at the moving pitch house? Why, it was tremendously spiffing, old bean. The moment I saw the locomotive barreling towards me, I nearly sold my slacks. I concur wholeheartedly, my good man. Andrew, how did you fare viewing the piece? I must confess, good sirs, I've not laid eyes upon the beast as yet. Of course, we should have realised, old chap. Our esteemed colleague here has not progressed to the moving picture as yet. Indeed, he barely understands the nature of recording on a wax cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair being discriminated in this way. My faculty and our three semester discuss the latest editions of fiction published in the printed format. And what, pray tell, was the last piece of prose you consumed? I believe it was Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. <laughs> Why, Andrew, that book was first published 40 years ago in the mid-1880s. So, boys, what did you think of your ancestors? I've realised that not much changes. And I've realised that I'd look awesome with a handlebar moustache and a bowler hat. I've realised I probably need to finish that book. Well, that's enough for now, don't you think? I'd better get you home to the future. And I won't, I hang on. We haven't seen ourselves. I mean, what happens to us, our future? I really shouldn't take you to the future. It never ends well. Go on, it'll be a laugh. Well, it's your funeral. Right, 
We've arrived 30 years into your future, the year 2044 to be exact. Wow! Everything looks so high tech. Ooh, look at this I just picked up. I'm impressed too, but I won't describe anything to cover my back in case it never actually gets invented. We're just in time to hear you recording another episode of the podcast. We're still doing it in the future. And no matter, you've been doing it this whole time. Apart from the year of the Mole Men invasion. What Mole Men? Nothing. Forget I said anything. Oh, Andy. Poor, poor Andy. Well, I guess we'd better poke our heads around this door then. This is the 50 Foot Nerds Podcast. Thank you for streaming us into your vein pods. Ah, greetings, mortals. Welcome to the 50 Foot Nerds. I am your overlord, Micros. Joining me in your audio slavery are... This is Paul Griggs. Back in my day, we had radio cassette players. And Monster Bunch were the size of your fist. And our other host. As usual... Andy Weirs is joining us from inside his bike box after his terrible accident. Five pence coins used to be enormous. Who have you been lording over this week, my underlings? There's two seven o'clocks in a day. And what about... All right, stop. Collaborate and listen. Ice is back with a brand new invention. I've had enough of this. Oh my god. How did I get that way? How did you get that way? What the fuck happened to me? I actually quite suit the cyborg look, don't you think? I lose the third electronic eye. Yeah. I wonder where Joe is in the future, though. Right. That's enough now. I need to take you boys back home. Into the time machine. Quick now, we're taking off. Hold on, boys. I had to buy future chutney. What the? A flying DeLorean? I haven't seen one of those since... So this is what the Time Vortex looks like then, eh? Doesn't look any like the Avon Doctor, do. Hey, Doc, what's this stick? Andy, wait! <laughs> You've knocked the Doc out with the rape stick, Andy. Oh, well, could be worse. It's worse he fell off the car. I didn't know it was a rape stick, did I? Actually, Andy can have one over there. Oh, let me guess. We're going to travel back to before Scarlett Johansson had the breast reduction. Don't be so last year, Paul. It's all about Emma Roberts these days. God, the things I'll do to her. Happening? No, it's just I'm sitting. Well, I think I know enough about time travel to get us home. Let me over. No, I want to do it. Hang on, what about me? Ah! <laughs> Oh, fuck. Is everyone okay? I, I think so. I'm alive. Just about. Where are we? Scratch that. When are we? Whoa, whoa there, easy girl. Having trouble with your cart there, fellas. You could say that. I don't see any horse tracks around, though. They must have bolted some time ago. We didn't have any horses. How on earth did you get out here, then? Well, it's hard to explain. Odd question, but where are we and what date is it? You boys must have hit your heads or something. You're in Nerd Valley, Christmas Day, 1885. Listen, let me pull the cart back into town, let me and my wife look after you, and in the morning I can help you fix your cart. Well, thank you. What's your name? The name's McQuinn. Declan McQuinn. This is it, boys. Me humble home. The first one my family will know on American soil. Why, I've met my wife here. Amy girl, come meet Mike, Andy and Paul. 
Well, howdy do there, stranger folk. Y'all boys done damn been stranded in them thar wilderness. What? Y'all spread your feet up and relax and anything y'all need. Y'all just give me a holler. Just call out, hey, my girl, and I'll come a-running. I don't mean to sound impolite, Mr. McQuinn, but I can't understand a fucking word she's saying. Ah, it's okay. You get used to it. What was that? Oh, no. That big old mad dog must be back in town. The fuck are you saying? McQuinn, hide. Mad dog, Memem and his posse are back in town. Ah, uh, be Jesus. Mad dog, Memem? Aye, mad dog Joe Memem, notorious outlaw, runs with his gang, the O-Men. The O-Men? No, that's a film. He said, the O-Men. Yeah, that's the film, isn't it? No, you're thinking of the O-Men. He said, the O-Men. They both sound the same to me. He asked me to shoe his horses last time he was in town. Rumour has it, they threw their shoes only a day or two later, and ever since then he's been after me. Going out here, McQuinn. You mean to have words. Why don't you leave him alone? You got a problem with him, you got a problem with us. Who's us? Who are you three runts? And why are you hiding that cowardly mule? We're the 50-foot nerds, and this guy here is our friend. Oh, really? Care to take a bullet for him, partner? Well, when I say friend, more of an acquaintance. <laughs> an associate. Hey, pal, I never even saw this asshole before. Hey, hey, Mad Dog, just leave these guys alone. I'm the guy you have a problem with. You had your chance, McQuinn. These gems have taken on your debt now. You just had to open your mouth, didn't you, Mike? I'll tell you what, I'm feeling generous. Seeing as it's Christmas and all, I'm not gonna shoot you right now. Oh, that's sweet of you. We duel at dawn. You choose your best hand against mine. Last man standing wins. You're on, Mad Dog. Oh, fuck. Good. And just to prove I'm not shitting you here. <laughs> oh, my knees. My creaky knees. <laughs> Why does that sound so familiar? Don't you bleed to death before I can put you down myself, McQuinn. Yeah! Shit. Are you okay, Mr. McQuinn? Oh, I think so. I'll be okay. Hey, me girl, it happened again. God dang it, y'all need to stop running that damn big mouth of yours! Oh, quiet, woman. Go fetch the bandage cloth and alcohol. Damn it, you fool! Should've done what Mama told me and married my cousin Cletus! Cleaning the wound out? That's sensible. You'll get an infection otherwise. It's not for me. I figure you boys should be out of your skull by the time he comes back to kill you in the morning. Wait a sec. How long is it until dawn, Mr. McQuinn? A few hours or so. Why? Well, if you can get our time as a uh, uh, cart repaired, then we can all get out of here and no one gets shot. Well, you boys have a damn funny looking cart, but, well, dang it, I'll give it my best shot. Good man. So, what do we do until it's fixed? Time to get more booze? Actually, I have a better idea. After last year's hijinks, I had a feeling something would go wrong again, so I brought the recording equipment with me. Hooray! We probably should, seen as we spent so long on the opening sketch. Well, guys, sunrise. Seems like our goose is cooked. Wait, what goose? Is someone making dinner for us? Why wasn't I informed? It's just a phrase, Andy. There's not literally a goose. Ah, uh, so it's like when someone says, keep stalking me and I'll call the police. They don't really mean it. No, it's not like that at all. Ah. Well, when we get back home, I might have to disappear for a short time. You mean if we get back home? Are we looking, Declan? I've done all I can do, but it's too late. Mad Dog will be here any minute, and there's no time to get away. You dumb son of a bitch! Y'all should work faster on this damn town vehicle! That's it. Time's up. Hey, Runt, get them damn asses out here. You boys ready? 
Not really, no. Hang on a minute. I think I have a plan. Well, it's about damn time you showed up. I thought you was gonna be yeller and I'd have to come in there and get you myself. Mad Dog, I'm asking you to reconsider this. Yeah, I mean, what's the point in shooting us? The point? The point? The point is that you assholes stood up to me. Nobody stands up to me. And they especially don't stand up to me to protect that no good McQuinn. Instead of all this anger towards him, have you ever actually thought of just sitting down and discussing things with him? You know, like men? You calling me a woman? Sure, things get lonely out on the prairie at night. And occasionally, my posse will curl up together for snuggins. But that ain't queer or nothing. And it still ain't queer if, from time to time, I like to wear women's underclothes. I just find them to be kinder on my skin after a hard day's ride. What. The. Fuck. Enough of this. One of you boys better pull your sidearm right now. Let's do this. I have a better idea, actually. What? <sighs> Did it work? Perfectly. I can't believe that I just witnessed the first person in history to be run over by a car, and they haven't even been invented yet. We won't be bothering you anymore, Declan. I can't thank you guys enough. You really saved me bacon. There's bacon now, too? It's another phrase, Andy. Oh. So, Declan, I was thinking, you and Amy, girl, it doesn't seem to me like you guys have the happiest of marriages. Why don't you come back to the future with us? Well, I'd love to see what the work is like in 130 years, but my place is here. And Amy girl, yeah, she's a handful, but she fucks like a saloon girl, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, I do, sir. <laughs> well, we'd best be off. It was lovely to meet you. Me too. And me. It was me pleasure. If you ever find yourselves back in time, come say hello. Right, I best find Dr. Brown and get these creaky knees of mine looked at. Take care, boys. Did he just say, Doc? Get in the car, Andy. But he said... Andy, get in. Oh, thank God we're home at last. I can put my feet up, have a nice cup of tea, and I'm home in time for Christmas Eve movie on the telly. I'd best be heading off to see the wife and kids, guys. They get awfully annoyed if I don't pay them a little attention at Christmas. At least that's what I think they said. I wasn't really listening. And as for me, I'm going to take these clips of demonica I have on my handy-dandy tablet and go and have a white Christmas. Hurry! Run! Hermione! Thank God I found you! Oh God, not you again. You need to come back with me. Back where? Back to the future! It's your kids, nerds. Something has to be done about your kids. They turn into real cunts. Oh, fuck this. Jesus Christ, Paul. Where do you keep getting shotguns from? I don't know. They just appear in the script. Oh, well, best get on with our annual Christmas tradition of chucking dead bodies in a ditch. It's only a tradition if it happens for three years or more. Well, you'd better write someone into next year's sketch for me to kill them, hadn't you? Sorry I'm late with the chutney, guys. You won't believe what I saw in the sky earlier. Oh. Um... Hi, Joe? Guys? Why is Doc Brown dead in the living room? Oh, that's a story for another time. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>